and your bright ideas. Oh, dear. Must be that costume. People say I look like Little Red Riding Hood in it. You're more Friar Tuck. Gail, those clues are going to trample Father Christmas. Oh, Gail, you always get the easy jobs. Well, now you know, Beth. PR isn't all ball gowns and celebrity dinners. You try drumming up subscriptions outside Finsbury Park Shoe. I haven't got that common touch. I suppose that's why you haven't even opened the letters. I am saving my nails. The hand cream feature. Ooh, tax demand. Mm, glad I didn't risk my modelling career for that. <laughs> North London Cable. Television. Dear Beverly Pinnock. Oh, it's addressed to me. Through the magazine, darling. <laughs> what do they want me for? They want to interview me about an article I wrote. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? What? <laughs> that. Just a laugh. I wouldn't want to hurt your feelings. Wouldn't you have to know what a feeling was? They're face facts. You're not exactly me, are you? I'm an extrovert. I'm a show off. Exactly. <laughs> Whereas you. You're definitely the writer. Our readers expect you to write. They expect me to look good, to let me do it. No. Oh, who wants to be interviewed by a piddling cable company anyway? You do. It's probably some back room outfit run by a bunch of amateurs with an audience of nil. It says it's a youth programme that deals with serious issues. This could be a good opportunity to raise the profile of the magazine. Amongst the under fives? Terrific. Well, who knows who might be watching? I could be the next Maura Stewart. Beth, have you seen those people? They are this thin. And that's <laughs> after the cameras have tripled, quadrupled them. If you start off your size, God knows where you'll end up. <laughs> They're interested in what I have in here, not what size skirt I wear. This is the media, darling. The cover is the book. OK. They're going to interview you about the importance of role models for children. First question, what is a role model? Someone who looks good on all occasions. <laughs> you! Moi! Can they get Madonna? Oh, they did try, Captain, but she was busy. How about a little support? Congratulations! Oh, congratulations, Mum. Thank you. <laughs> is it a late-night show? Our friends won't see it, will they? What do you two mean, exactly? Well... You're not... Madonna. Naomi. Gail. Gail? Who's Gail? Aisha. Gail's brain is the size of a pea under a microscope. Oh, that girl. She doesn't even know what a role model is. Oh, yeah, but she's a television type. At her age. I'm that age. Oh, I don't believe you two. Oh, I'm sorry, Mum. It's just that you're not someone our friends want to be like. Aisha, I didn't want to be like me at your age. I wanted to be Diana Ross. Why? <laughs> oh, the next thing you want me to change into somebody else. We'll start with what you wear. Your hair. Your weight. Learn to sing. What, for some piggly? Cable programme? Cable? Why didn't you say so? Nobody watches cable. When are you on, Mum? <laughs> yeah, Mum's going to be on telly. Lovely. Yeah, they're going to interview and me. And that's that... in. Bring your slicer, Kate Beverly. Oh, thanks, Mum. Can I share it with these two? All right, I bring Aisha Pishikashio with Catherine. Oh, thanks, Gran. Oh, that doesn't seem fair. Beverly, you have to be careful. What pass through your lips rests on your hips. <laughs> I'm in perfect proportion for a woman of my size. I don't say you're fat, but I notice how you're wearing down the carpet. <laughs> Mum's thinking of going on a diet. Stop, think, and start. <laughs> Love you too, Mum. Hey, hey. Do you think they'll let us come to watch you, Miss Pinnock? Ooh, ruin your street cred. I mean, there's only cable. Please, please. I don't see how I can stop you. They're filming me here. I declare this fundraising committee for the West Indian Social Club officially open. You can't just cut the key and don't miss the Zaka. This is how my son opens all his proceedings. And he should know he's a lawyer. Well, we are not gathered here to talk about your son. How Beverly getting on with her work these days, Mrs. Pinnock? Still with the Fool Fool magazine. I talk so. I see her the other day outside the station, dressed up like Father Christmas. I thought we are not here to talk about her children. I was thinking that maybe the magazine, you know, a way of helping the committee raise some money. Raise money? That puppy show magazine can't even raise salary to pay Beverly. <laughs> it's still struggling. Mm -hmm. What a shame. You were trying to find another job with the council. How's the search going? Well, actually, Don't Beverly... Don't cut across me, Henry. <laughs> I was going I to say you that, Beverly... I supposed to be taking minutes. Eighteen so far. <laughs> All right. Back to the agenda. 
My son, Kofi, the lawyer, has promised to run a sponsorship for the club at five different law practices in the city. Yes, and even taking collection at her school. Oh, it's such a help when your children are university educated with a professional career, <laughs> isn't it, Miss Mark? Oh, yes. <laughs> a blessed day, Yvonne finish her studies and get her past papers. And being an Oxford graduate, it means Kofi has so many contacts in the business world. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Beverly again, Mrs. Skinner? <laughs> Beverly went to university. But she never gets her past papers. You leave after the first year. Mm. Don't you have Aisha? What a shame. <laughs> I thank God my daughter passed through without any of those problems. Well, I wouldn't call my granddaughter a problem. You watch and see if she don't end up something big in this country. As long as she don't take after her mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's all down to the home environment. Mm -hmm. It is important that children have the right influence from their parents. As I was saying about my you daughter... You can't see people talking, Henry. She's going to be on television. Television? Always up to some fool, fool business. When, Henry? What time? Well, actually, I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? Tell the ladies what's happening. BBC or ITV? Well, I think it's Channel 4. Oh, I'll get my son to take it on his new VHS. If my daughter going to be on television, it's going to be BBC. BBC one? Of course. The same studio where they make Terry Wogan? Of course. Well, actually, according to Aisha, them coming to the house. Even better. Do you know, this could be a good opportunity for raising money for the club. How? Advertise what we are doing on television. What a good idea. Help a black London pensioner. How about that, Mrs. Pinnock? You think I never think about that already? Is my daughter involved in this, not your big shot, son? <laughs> Again? I am being spoiled. Thanks, girls. Anything else you need, Mum? No, I'm all right, thanks. We told the whole school about the TV people coming to film me here, Miss Pinnock. Yeah, they were so jealous. Of cable? Well, we, we didn't, didn't tell him that bit. <laughs> you sure there's nothing else you need? We could choose what you're going to wear. I mean, if you're busy. What uh, are you don't know what to. Well, oh. what do you think? How are you doing, Beverly? Hi, Sha. Hi, Gran. Oh, thanks, Gran. It's for Beverly. For me? And you two girls better stop this turbar. I cook in all your meals between now and the show. Everything low calorie. What is that interest, Mum? You think I want you to go on television and look like you don't have a mother? <laughs> your father coming to take your running tomorrow. What for? Shake off the weight. <laughs> what about this one? Mm, that won't suit you, Mum. That's more you. What about this one for you, Mum? That look great on you, Kath. Yeah. I'll put that with my definite maybes. How about something sexy for your Mum? She's lost a stone. She could look sexy. Hi, girls. Hi, Aisha, darling. <laughs> oh, she's not wearing that. Tacky, tacky. <laughs> oh, is this the shortlist? Oh, they're mine. That's my lot. So is this selection for your mother? I don't think so, girls. This is more like it. Oh, uh, that's gross, girl. She'll look like a ten. Mm. Maybe that's worn. How much has she lost? A stone. Don't be ridiculous. You mean a pound, surely. <laughs> what about those outfits? Those are mine, darlings. I couldn't make up my mind what I was wearing. Gail, you don't live here. You're not on the show. Aisha, darling, your mother and I have spoken, and she needs my support. <laughs> what do you think? Mm. Well, the slits a bit. Yes, I thought so. There. <laughs> that didn't take much doing, did it? <laughs> Thanks for the run, Dad. I really enjoyed it. Bev, Bev. What do well, you think? For me? 
I don't like any of them. Beverly, come over with me. I'll make some fish tea for you to drink. Oh, not fish tea, Mum. It's, oh, it's horrible. It tastes like fish. It's good for losing weight. How much you lose? Apparently only a pound. And I get a piece of fabric to run up a dress for you to wear. Hang on a minute. I'm the one who's being interviewed. Look, I really appreciate all your help, but you lot aren't on the show. Mum, we're doing it for you. It doesn't matter if we're not on the show, Miss Pinnock. Any little thing to help Beverly. All right, Mum, you do something around the house, a bit of polishing. I shall... Oh, can we interview you? Give you a dummy run? OK, you and Catherine put me through her paces. Gail, you watch. As for what I'm wearing, I'll choose. <laughs> Don't do nothing for your Beverly. What do you think, Mum? I'll hurry up, Mum, otherwise you won't have time to practice. Oh, you're not worried that, are you, Miss Pinnock? Of course she isn't. Bev, I know you've chosen something already, but this is really quite special. That rip-rip tear-up dress? It's a Galliano. <laughs> well, make him go long, no? I finish tearing him up and put him to good use. Oh, Mrs Pinnock, I know you're joking. Oh! <laughs> Beverly. Don't bother put on my dress to practice in. Wait for the camera people come. I told you, I bought my own dress. We are good, good money when I tell you I was going to make it for you. You never listen, do you? I remember the time when you insisted on making a dress for my nativity play. You had the best dress in the whole play. I was playing a donkey. <laughs> Mum, can we go over your words? Look, they'll be here any minute. It's not enough time. Oh, come on, Bev. I want to practice my interviewing skills. Mum, you promised. You promised I'd pass a promo video, Miss Pinnock. <sighs> oh, my. Yes. I find it. I, Beverly Pinnock, take one. Action! <laughs> And don't worry about the room. I'll make sure the camera's pointed in an attractive corner. I'm sure you will. Come on, Gail. Makeup. Oh, they're not interviewing you. I know, but it's important to feel good. All right. So, Beverly Pinnock. Oh, what was the article about again? <sighs> Positive role models for young people. Oh, that's right, like Naomi Campbell. Yeah. Madonna. I'd hardly call what she does modelling. Oh, get on with it. All right. <clears throat> So, Miss Pinnock, tell us what Iman's up to these days. Oh, God, look, I'll do the interview, you do the makeup. Did you hear that, Bev? Your daughter's telling me to give up my day job. I give up altogether. Okay, you've had your fun. By the time I come back down, I want this place back to how it was. Please. Nerves. <laughs> My new dress. If you think you're going to the BBC to show me up, you have another think coming. What BBC? It's cable. Whatever it is. You're not going to make me look like I can't dress me one child. I'm 33. And still can't look good. I'm not wearing that. It looks like a wedding dress. It's about time you get to wear one. Oh, right, right. Nothing I ever do good enough. Oh, don't start. You're only interested in your father. Here we go. I go to all the trouble making the dress and you just throw it in my face. Mum! It don't matter. All right. I'll wear the dress when I get married. <laughs> Just do one thing for me, Beverly. Mention the social club. Tell them we're fundraising and we're trying to help a black London pensioner. Which one? Me and all the other people at the club. It's not my program. I know I shouldn't bother waste my time. If it was Mrs. Akasson, no. That would be a different thing. Any help him mother want him, give it to her. What do you expect me to do? Hijack the show? I know I should have had a boy. Girl, <laughs> child, <I'm just> <laughs> The least you could do is put her on the dress. Hello? Beverly, you is a role model. 
I'm gonna make sure Yvonne take the video to school and show all the children. Today is a wonderful day. <laughs> you bring great joy to your family and pride to your community, Beverly. Mm -hmm. Do you know when it was my son's big day in Ghana? I'm not here to talk about your son. Well, what's the viewing charge? What? We have to start the fundraising somewhere, seeing that you're not going to help. Beth, have you gone crazy? Do you want to kill off the magazine? Mum, are you all right? Should I tell my mum to go to bingo instead of staying in to watch? Beverly, you look beautiful. My name is the girl dress. What time the television people come in? They're not. What? They've just rung. They're running late in some other programme and they've cancelled. Cancelled? Oh, thank God. Mm. Television. The legal profession always runs on time. Go to the zoo. Oh, please stay. Have some tea. A slice of cake. I guess I've just got that type of a body. Every little bit said something. Mainly, you are gorgeous Gail Thompson. <laughs> what do you think? Nice. Do I sense a touch of jealousy? No. I understand, Bev. You probably didn't notice, but I was a teensy-weensy bit jealous myself when that cable company wanted to interview you. I was! I had a crisis of confidence. I felt rejected, abandoned, unloved. So I know what you're going through. You are jealous. No, Gail. But you must feel awful. You exercised, you drank your mother's fish tea, you wore that dress. Ugh. You lost your pride, your self-esteem, everything. Except those vital pounds off your hips. Probably another modelling assignment. Gail speaking, editor of Shades. North London Cable. Oh. Hello, Beverly Pinnock speaking. Yes. Tonight, eight o'clock. Yeah, that's fine. Bye. I thought they cancelled. No, I did. I got them to switch to the studio. God, who would have thought you could be so devious? You and my family turned the whole thing into a circus. I had to. Why don't you give them a call? Get yourself a ticket. Oh, and be part of a studio audience. Do me a favour, Bev. <laughs> you do realise you'll be doing this in front of a live audience? Mm, no, isn't it exciting? And you're not nervous? Of a little interview? Of course not. <laughs> My family were here. My mother's here and it's murder. She must be very proud. She's a dragon. She's <laughs> forcing me into things I don't want to do. Oh, I know the feeling. I'm dying for a cigarette. I'm sorry I don't smoke. Neither do I. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. I'm here to talk about role models. Somebody who gives confidence to children. I'm shaking like a leaf. Look. Why not concentrate on one of your role models? Anyone you admire? Yes. If she were here, she wouldn't be nervous at all. She's not frightened of anything. Mind you, at that age, they just don't care. Anyone I know? Aisha. Doesn't ring a bell. What is she? A model? Actress? A singer? <laughs> no. Aisha's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Western Union Social Club. I see you all inside. Aren't oh, you coming in with us? Oh, well done, they can go through the celebrity entrance. <laughs> fool, fool. <laughs> Excuse me. Name? Gail Thompson. Lord Gail Thompson. Look. I've been walking around this building for the last 15 minutes, shoved from one entrance to another, and I'm just about sick of it. Sorry to hear that. 
It doesn't surprise me that you don't have my name when you don't even have a proper guest entrance. Now, I'd appreciate it if you stood aside and let me through. Can't do that. Don't you, by some miracle, happen to have a girlfriend? Yeah. And would she by any chance read a magazine called Shades? Yeah, once. And what did she think of it? Don't know. It came free with the red mallet. <laughs> Well, I happen to be the editor of that magazine. Don't say. And if you don't stand aside and let me through, I'm afraid you're in grave danger of losing your job. That's so. If I am not before those cameras, beside my colleague, in exactly ten minutes, one of your programs is not going to get made. Wouldn't be the first. Are you going to let me through or not? No. Well, excuse me! <laughs> I will dare you! Let me go! I thought they would give us drinks and peanuts and everything. You can't leave your stomach out of it for a change. I only worried in case they pick it up on the mic. Oh, it's also very exciting. Even more excited when my daughter flooded the committee with money for the club. Let's not count our chickens before they hatch pound coins, Mrs. Peanut. There she is. <laughs> Just think of your daughter. I was. Nice and quiet, please. In five, four, three, two. Beverly Pinnock, Pinnock. <laughs> Take that one again, Gary. Yes, of course. Beverly Pinnock, I believe you're chief writer of Shades magazine, currently living in Finsbury Park with her daughter. <laughs> Tell me, Beverly Pinnock, what's your name? What do you do? <laughs> How do you do? Cat. Sorry, Stuart. I got my notes mixed up. Again? Action. Beverly Pinnock. I believe you're the chief writer for the magazine Shadows. Cat. Relax. You'll be fine. It's my mother. I can hear her breathing down my earpiece. Lock her out. All I ever wanted was to be a train driver. What happened? I think the young boy have nerves. Oh, I'm spoiling up everything. Nobody going to hear anything about the club. I did say we mustn't be too over hasty, Mrs. Speed up. I tell you something, Mrs. Zaka. I'm not leaving this place till I finish my business. You ready, Gary? Or are we going to be here all night? Ready, Stuart. So, Beverly Pinnock, yes, what's your... Yes, my name is Beverly Pinnock. I live in Finsbury Park with my daughter, Aisha. Is that... Yes, a... it's in North London. I'm also the chief writer <laughs> of the North London-based magazine, Shades. The I subject really... I've been asked to talk about tonight is role models for young people. When are you going to stop talking right. about that stupid magazine? I was a little nervous this little coming up today. Your daughter has I'm no intention of mentioning the social class. And I wasn't sure what I could say to your audience. But Where are you going? Young daughter, see if I can catch me. Me. I'm I'm reminded me. I have a lot Red of young people. We've been for a while now, and we hope that we can reflect a positive image for our young readers in particular. It's important so that children have role models, people they can look to for guidance. Teachers, doctors are all wonderful role models, but the most important, I feel, are journalists. I mean, parents. Smelly, Melly, Mum, what are you doing here? Who's that? Mum, go away. Your mother. We're talking about role models and the important part parents have to play. And here, we have a mother and daughter team. What are you doing here? Stop rough me up. Mrs. Pinnock, what's your opinion? Well, I think people like my daughter should consider them parents more because we always do our best. Anyhow, I want to ask Mrs. the audience Pinnock. if they will Mrs. give us a can you look into the camera over there, Mrs. Pinnock? <coughs> well. Well, I... <laughs> I think Gran's in shock. You can't take that woman anywhere. Oh, Mum, are you all right? <laughs> Mum? <laughs> My mother runs a West Indian social club, and she'd like to make an appeal to the audience. Mum? Uh, how do you become a member of this social club? I think you write in. And how long do people stay? A whole day? 
A couple of hours. Oh, as long as they like. Them could sleep overnight if them like. Grindon. We even have our own little minibus. Grindon. We go to some nice places around England. Sometimes take a weekend off. We're planning a trip to the West Indies. Thank you, sir. We're talking about role models, ladies and gentlemen. And already Beverly Pinnock has inspired at least one person in this audience. Me. This West Indian social club, <laughs> it sounds like a nice idea. Mrs. Johnson, can you raise your hand? How about some time away from home, Mother Dearest? <laughs> Why did you open your mouth, Gail? I didn't. Well, you didn't say I shouldn't. And when she phoned and you'd gone home early, she wanted to know why. It just slipped out. She almost ruined everything. You handled it brilliantly, Bev. How do you know? You couldn't even get in. I didn't have to. Look at this. Subscriptions galore. It's a marvel. You're fantastic. I do know. Good. I was running out of superlatives. Gail, these letters will not open by themselves. I've got this little problem. Thing is, those guards were such brutes, I think I've sprained my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please tell me how steep the steps are to your bill? What is this? Do you arrange transport to and from your premises? What on earth? I'm interested in macrame for the arthritic. Care of Shades magazine. Have you any energetic 70-something men for my mother at your social club? <laughs> oh, no. The Dutchy Social Club, care of Shades magazine. Next time, Bev, stick to the writing. I'll do the PR. Shades magazine. No, no, this is not the Dutchy Social Club. Hello, Shades... Subscriptions? Yes, we'll send you a form. No, we do not have Zimmer frame access. <laughs> Don't, Bev. We're losing subscribers. Put the answering machine on. I am not manning a granny hotline. Just this one. Hello, Shades. Hello, this is Shades magazine. I'm sorry there's no one here to take your call at the moment, but please leave a message after you hear the beep. Thank you. Beverly? Beverly? What is this? I want to know why you shared me up last night. <laughs> Beverly, you just make sure when you get into that office, you give me a call at home. Beverly. <laughs> Thank you.